This is the power supply board out of a, a ViewSonic VP2130B. It's made by Delta, and the number is EADP-64BF, then space, and then a B again. This power supply is also used in the ViewSonic VP2030B. Now, I already made a video about repairing uh, that ViewSonic monitor. The earlier video went through, you know, the disassembly process and concentrated on this capacitor here. This is the most common problem in this power supply. This, this capacitor called C1, it's a 400 uh, volt, uh, 150 microfarad cap, and it fails with extremely high frequency, especially if it's made by this company here, Tycon. I have seen so many of these fail. Every time it has a Tycon capacitor, it oh, it's always bad. Sometimes they swell like, like this one. You can see it's swollen. Sometimes you'll see material dripping out of the positive terminal. And sometimes the positive terminal will fall out altogether. When these capacitors are failing, uh, the equivalent series resistance builds up and they can get so hot that the, the plastic can actually peel off. And when they get hot like that, they can cause discoloration of the board all around them. Now, of course, you also want to check these other caps. I've seen other caps here fail and you kind of have to check them all. And if you're going to, you know, do this kind of work at all, I really suggest that you get yourself an ESR meter. These things are invaluable for looking for bad capacitors. The reason I'm making a part two video is I've discovered uh, another bad capacitor problem that I want to point out because it does occur with some frequency. I, I had three of them fail right in a row. Specifically, it's this little tiny capacitor right here. Okay, this is called C5. It's a 22 microfarad, 50 volt capacitor. And this little tiny thing can cause all kinds of havoc. Turning the board over now, <clears throat> this is that capacitor sitting right here. Right here, we have the uh, pulse width modulator chip that kind of drives everything. This pulse width modulator is DAP008, made by On Semiconductor. Now, this little capacitor here controls the VCC voltage of this chip. Here is the PDF file of this chip produced by On Semiconductor. There's our chip right there, and this is sort of a representative circuit that you'll find it in. The chip draws its power off the high voltage, which in this case is 160, but then internal to the chip, it produces its own VCC voltage, drawing it off of the, the high voltage. Okay, now that voltage is being stored on this little capacitor right here. And if that capacitor goes bad, this VCC voltage becomes erratic and the chip malfunctions. This chip takes a feedback signal from the hot side across a optoelectrical coupler. This device basically samples the current and then sends a feedback signal to what's called FB feedback, pin 2. And when the voltage is dropping, this signal is rising. And what I found is if this capacitor goes bad, the chip ignores this signal. Because I have a couple of these monitors, I could take a good board, a known good power supply, and compare it to the bad power supply. By the way, I've already replaced the Tycon. I've already replaced it on this power supply. I did that some time ago. Of course, now the power supply has failed again, this time because of this little C5. And by the way, these capacitors fail with such high frequency that if you have one of these and it hasn't failed yet, I recommend you just go ahead and replace it. Because if it hasn't failed, it's going to fail. Now, on this good power supply, this one's using a cap from a different brand called LTEC. These caps seem to hold up a little bit better. So I'm actually going to start by looking at the good power supply board with our oscilloscope to see what the signal should look like. Now, it's sort of convenient that the power supplies and these monitors are, are separate boards. You can actually remove them and test them independently. You can run this by itself. Okay, now I have the power supply hooked up to AC, and I have it. I have the oscilloscope probe grounded here. This is the cold ground or the output ground, and you can we can test the voltage right here. Okay, we'll go look at that on the oscilloscope. Now we're going to look at the output voltage on the good power supply board. We're going to turn on the power supply. 
It goes up instantly. Okay, that's normal. Now we will test the output voltage on the bad power supply. See it rising extremely slowly. It should shoot right up there instantaneously. Now it's going up this high because it's under no load whatsoever, so it can reach that level. But under any load at all, that voltage would be much lower. Now we'll look at the voltages on the input side, or the hot side, around our pulse width modulator. Specifically, we'll look at the feedback on pin 2, and the VCC on pin 6, and the driver pulses on pin 5. Now a good place for ground on the hot side is here. Now we will look at the voltages on the hot side or input side of the good power supply board. This is pin 5 of the uh, pulse width modulator, and those are the output pulses coming from the chip driving the transformer. This is the feedback signal going back to the chip, and it's oh, less than a volt, indicating that the feedback is indicating normal voltage. And next is the VCC voltage. A little bit of a sawtooth there, but that's, that's normal. That's what they look like when they're normal. Now we will look at the voltages on the hot side or input side of the bad power supply board. This is the VCC voltage with a bad capacitor. Wow. Okay, I'm going to have to speed up our oscilloscope. What a crazy signal. That's what it looks like with a bad VCC capacitor. This is what uh, pin 5 looks like. This is the output of the PWM, and the pulses are occurring less frequently, and they are at a fixed frequency. Here's what the feedback signal looks like when we first turn it on. Much higher voltage. Now, as the output voltage slowly rises, that feedback signal will drop. And as you can see, it was too high, and it just slowly drops. Now we have removed that C5 capacitor, and we're going to go ahead and test it with our ESR meter. Wow, look at that. ESR over 40 ohms. That's like off-scale. It doesn't go any higher. So clearly this capacitor has completely failed. And here's a new capacitor for comparison. Yeah, that's much better. 20 microfarad, 2.7 ohms. I have gone ahead and replaced that troublesome capacitor on the power supply board, and now this board is operating normally, identical to the known good board. So that little tiny capacitor brought the whole system down. So we know that this big capacitor is the biggest cause of trouble in this power supply board. But in fact, any of these capacitors can go bad and cause problems, including this little tiny one. This little bitty capacitor can actually bring down the whole monitor. Now, I think it's particularly vulnerable because it's close to this capacitor. And this capacitor, particularly if the ESR is building up, this capacitor can get very hot. And that heat can really damage this capacitor. It's so close. But anyway, so if you're having trouble with this board, Check this one, number one, but also check this little guy here. That could be the answer. Okay, uh, I hope that helps you.